All right, hey, we're gonna transition into word real quick. I just wanna share um, a little message about Christmas. Um, so let's pray and we'll get started. God, thank you so much um, for Christmas. Thank you for the opportunity for us to celebrate your birth, uh, Jesus' birth. Um, God, I pray that um, tonight as we come in to highlight um, with everything that we're carrying in, all the burdens, whether it be school or family, stress, anxiety, just everything. God, we come to you with those things, those burdens, and we lay them down at your feet, and we just ask that you would just speak to us. God, we ask that you would just show us and remind us how much you love us. So we love you and we thank you, and it's all in your name. Amen. All right, turn your neighbor real quick and say, Merry Christmas. All right, sweet. Just making sure you guys are there. Hey, uh, tonight, I um, just want to share a little bit of a word to, for you guys tonight, um, and it's going to be really simple. We're going to kind of go through a little part of the Christmas story, the, um, the birth of Jesus, and we're kind of just diving just a little bit of it, just a little part, um, and I just kind of want to share with you guys three simple reasons why Christmas matters, right? We all celebrate it. We love Christmas. I love, love, love Christmas. Um, I love the movies. I love the food. Um, I love setting up Christmas trees. We're really excited. Um, my wife and I, we just got um, an artificial Christmas tree this year, so I didn't have to go find one. Um, and it's amazing. It's got a little LED lights on it, so I can actually change colors. It's pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. Um, but for you guys, um, I also want to update you a little bit. Uh, we had a unique uh, Christmas present come a little bit early. Um, as you can see the pictures on the screen, uh, our family grew one um, plus one this uh, back November 19th. Um, that there is Eli and little Nora, Nora Gray. Um, she joined us on November 19th, and she is amazing. She's beautiful. And uh, we're so excited to uh, finally meet her. Um, I have not slept since November 19th, so a um, little tired, but super blessed and enjoying it. Um, not going to lie, Eli, he's, uh, he's having a lot of fun, but he's adjusting. He's getting used to the fact that, hey, I'm not the only one in the house anymore. Who is this? This person's staying around and what's going on? Um, so he's kind of you know, checking around to make sure, like, all right, this is, this is legit. And so... If you could be praying for them as they're getting used to each other, Eli's uh, getting used to it, and um, we're having a lot of fun. Um, we're super excited, and we're also willing and able, if you guys ever want to come change diapers for us, um, just let me know. Give me a call. I, I am all for it, okay? It's a great experience. It's the best thing you'll ever do in your life. So um, that's kind of our world right now these past couple weeks, um, as we're kind of getting used to having a family for. Um, but like I shared tonight, we want to dive into the Christmas story and just kind of talk a little bit about why it matters and then what we can do in response uh, of this idea, of this important um, date in history. So um, I want to share with you guys a little bit of the Christmas story, and that's in the book of Matthew. So we're going to start there and unpack it a little bit, but it's Matthew chapter 1, uh, verses 18 through 23. Matthew, um, he was uh, one of the fathers of Jesus' disciples, and he's kind of just recording um, the story of the life of Jesus. And um, he kind of paints a little bit of a picture of the beginning. And so I want to share this a little bit with you and uh, unpack it. Um, but basically what he's saying here, this is how the birth of Jesus, this Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But, after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, um, and it says this, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So I just wanna stop right there, just kinda unpack a little bit of this kind of encounter. This is, uh, sometimes we always think about, you know, this great story, you know, everyone's in the manger, there's some, some donkeys, there's, you know, little baby Jesus, you know, you got your little ornaments and everything, some, some wise men coming around, but we forget this is a really difficult situation, right? And so the angel of the Lord has to come to Joseph and talk to Joseph because he's like, you know, my wife is pregnant and I don't understand what's going on here. And so they're really difficult times and they're struggling, um, but the Lord really wanted to speak to them and let them know about who was to come. 
And so there's really three things that I just want to share from these couple verses here that really stood out and stood out to me and are great reminders, and I hope are great for reminders for you as you kind of go into this Christmas season of celebrating, spending time with family, and just celebrating who Jesus is. Um, but the first thing, the first thing is this. Christmas reminds us that God keeps his promises, right? Uh, the Matthew, the writer, he's kind of quoting um, in verse uh, 23, this, uh, this prophecy from Isaiah, he's quoting it directly from Isaiah 7, 14. The virgin will, come, will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Now, to give you a little context, this was actually written, and you can find it in the Old Testament, and like I said, in Isaiah 7, but this is actually written and prophesied about, uh, about 740 years before Jesus was born. And so 740 years later, this prophecy finally takes place. And if you look in scripture, and and if you were with us this morning, Sunday morning, and it's kind of cool, it worked out like uh, Josh, uh, Pastor Josh was talking about this idea of the Old Testament is full of these um, Old Testament prophecies speaking about this Messiah, this Christ, this Savior who would come to save us. Right, and we see at, at Christmas, at the birth of Jesus, the fulfillment of all those promises. I don't know about you guys, but maybe 2020 has been a difficult year for pretty much everyone, I would say. Uh, But sometimes there's a lot of people say a lot of things. You know, they predict a lot of things. They tell you a lot of different things, saying, hey, you can trust me. It's going to be okay. We'll get through this. Uh, But sometimes it's hard to know who to trust. But one thing I find is so interesting in Scripture, and you see all these prophecies, and so many of them, you can see how they clearly come through time and time again. Someone's trustworthiness can also come from their track record, right? If this someone is reliable, if they keep saying what they say and actually live out what they say they're going to do, that's someone who's pretty trustworthy. And what we learn from Scripture and we can see play out in our lives is that God is a God who keeps his promises, you know, historians will maybe debate, you know, was Jesus really God? You know, that, that, that maybe is up for debate for some folks. Uh, for me, it's not. But one thing historians do not debate is the fact that Jesus was a real life person. There's, there's no denying it, you know, whether it's Christian historians or, or atheist historians, they all look back and they all have to recognize that Jesus was a real life figure. That event did, in fact, take place because there's so many other sources, so many records that speak to this event that take place. And yet there are authors, there are, there are prophets that, that were happening hundreds and hundreds of years ago speaking to this one event. And so it lets us know, it reminds us that God is a God who keeps his promises. He is a God that you can trust. You know that when he says something, he means it and he will follow through. I believe that God has some promises for you. And I believe that we can look back and see how he is trustworthy. And I believe that you can trust him as well. And so the second thing I wanted to share is that Christmas reminds us that God saves us, right? Christmas reminds us that God saves us. In verse 21, you know, the angel's talking to Joseph and trying to, like, encourage him, like, hey, it's not what you think. All right, this is the Holy Spirit doing his thing. Um, And so he says, you know, hey, you're going to be able to call your son Jesus, now, Jesus, um, if you actually understand it, it's a Greek word for um, the name Joshua, which literally means, in Hebrew, the Lord saves. And so when we hear the name Jesus, what we're saying, what we're speaking to be true is that Jesus, the Lord, saves us. Right? And that's ultimately why Jesus came to earth, was to save us. Right, Jesus, you know, he didn't come just so we could have this cool nativity scene and some cool like little things we can decorations we can set up every Christmas at our, you know, at our house, and that's great. But the reason he ultimately came is so that he would die. Right? He ultimately came so that he could give up his life um, to show us how much we matter, to to pay the penalty for our mistakes, for our sin, the things that we've done, so that we could be restored. If you were to look at scripture, you know, from cover to cover, a, a great simple way of describing this book is to say this is God's redemptive story of God redeeming, of, of restoring our relationship with us. From the beginning when we sinned in the Garden of Eden to the time where he ultimately, would, Jesus would come and save us from our sins and the time that he'll come back again in the end. It is a redemptive story. God loves us and cares about us and wants to be in a relationship with us with us. So God uh, wants to save us. He wants us to be in a relationship with him. 
And I don't know about you guys, but maybe that's kind of like cool. Maybe I've heard that growing up a lot. But I think that's the really important thing to remember, ultimately, that we need help. We need a Savior. And I don't know about you, but maybe you're feeling like in 2020, with all the things that are going wrong in this world, you're finally starting to realize that you actually do have a need for something greater than yourself. I know I have. All right, I'm very, very aware of my need for him. And I'm also very aware of, of his love for me to make a way. Even when it doesn't always make sense, even when I don't always know how it's gonna work out, God has a plan. And I know I can trust that plan because I've seen his track record. I've seen that he keeps his promises. And then thirdly, I just wanna say that Christmas really is a great time. It reminds us that God is with us, that God is with us. You know, as for me, as I was kind of, you know, reading into this, you know, and there's one verse where it talks about, and it calls Jesus Emmanuel. Matthew's kind of, you know, kind of describing, you know, the significance of this, more, this moment. So he's quoting, you know, Isaiah 7 and 14, talks about this prophecy, this idea that Emmanuel, God will be with us in the flesh. And so when we celebrate Christmas, we are celebrating the fact that the same God who created the heavens and the earth, every, you know, as you look up into the night sky and you see all the stars, all the galaxies out there, the vastness, the greatness that everything is out there, he's the same one who spoke that into existence. He's the same one who holds up those things, right? He's the same one who is all powerful, almighty, who knows all things. And he's the same one who chose to humble himself to take on the very nature of one of us so that he could sacrifice himself for us. As great as he is and as small as he is, as this big, great, transcendent God that is outside of time and space chose to be imminently involved in our lives. He chose to be with you in your mess. He chose to be with you in your pain and your hurt. He chose to be with you in your insecurities. He chose to be with you, but with the things that no one else knows about you, that only you know, that you're holding on to, that maybe you're not proud of, that you know you've done, that you've been hurting inside, or, or maybe some things that were done to you by some other people are really hurting, hurt you. He sees those things, he knows those things, and he loves you, he cares about you, and he wants to be with you, to come alongside you. He's been where we've been. He's experienced what we've experienced. And he has made a way for us to be with him. You know, for me, I, I love Christmas, and I love the, the opportunity that we get to celebrate that Jesus is with us, that, you know, Emmanuel, God really did come in the flesh to be with us. And that's such a great thing. And, you know, for me, as I kind of get used to being a uh, dad 2.0 and having a little baby girl, um, one of the things that's been uh, pretty, pretty fun and a unique experience um, is that, you know, babies, they, they don't do much other than sleep, eat, and poop, okay? So that's been my life the last uh, three weeks. And it's, it is an honor, it is a privilege, um, it is smelly, I won't lie to you, it is a little gross. Um, but sometimes for me, as the husband, as the dad, sometimes it's a little bit different for the, for the mom, but for the dad, sometimes it's a little hard to try and get the baby to, um, to be comforted. You know, when she's crying, she's upset, because she doesn't have any way to communicate what she needs other than to just start crying, right? If she needs some food, if she's hungry, if she's hurting, like the same answer, the same response is always gonna be her crying. And so for me, it's hard though, you know, trying to comfort her and say, hey, it's okay, it's okay. And, you know, she'll just keep crying. She doesn't hear, she doesn't understand, you know. I don't know what she needs. I'm trying to figure it out. And so it could be really, really difficult. But one of the things I found that actually kind of works well, and you know, some, some of the, you know, the doctors you know, kind of encouraged me to do this, is sometimes it's really helpful when you're, especially as a dad, to, to hold the baby when you're holding her and she's upset, she's crying, to, to put her close to you, to put her, her head against your chest so she can kind of hear your heart. And so there, there's this something that's special, I don't exactly understand how it all works, but this idea of this closeness, this intimacy, comforts her. It makes her know that, hey, my dad's with me. He's got me. It's going to be okay. And I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about this special moment, and sometimes I'll find myself late at night at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and I just kind of hold her, and I bring her close. Like, it's okay. It's okay. Dad is here. He's with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. You got this. It's okay. And as she draws close, she begins to hear my heart. She begins to, to hear, hey, like this guy, whoever this stranger is, he cares about me. He loves me. And I think about God and I think about our relationship with him and I think it's the same way. 
Right, sometimes when life is hurt and life is messed up and things don't make sense and we're struggling to get along in this life that we're living right now in 2020 and all that's gone on, right, we're crying out, we don't understand what, what's gonna happen or what, you know, making sense of everything. And God just comes and says, hey, I got you. I'm with you. Emmanuel, God is with us. Come close, I want you to be with me. Everything's gonna be okay. I don't know what you're, you're struggling with tonight. I don't know what you're coming on um with. You know, sometimes Christmas is a great time where we can celebrate a family. Sometimes Christmas brings the Christmas blues. You know, we, sometimes there's some depression. Sometimes it's hard because we don't always get along with our family. And so when you're around your family, it can be a little more difficult. Wherever it is that you're struggling tonight, whatever it is that you're crying out to trying to make sense of it, I want you to know that your heavenly Father loves you He's a man of his word. He wants to save you, he wants to help you, and he wants you to know that he is with you with whatever you are struggling with. The bottom line tonight is this. When you rest in God's presence, you can rejoice because hope has come. You can rejoice because hope has come. I want you to know tonight, if you walk away nothing, knowing nothing else, is that when you come close to God and you embrace his love for you, you can rejoice. And so there's just two quick things that I just wanna share with you as we kind of finish up. Two practical things that I just want you to walk away with is this. You can celebrate the gift of his presence. Let me say that again. You can celebrate the gift of his presence. And number two, you can rejoice for all to hear. One of the things that's so cool about the, the birth story of Jesus is that when Jesus is born, he's in the manger, he's hanging out, um, there's some, some people that come to visit him. There's some wise men, some magi, you know, from the east, uh, possibly from Persia, we're not really sure, um, but they come and they wanna visit and they wanna meet the Messiah, they wanna meet this Jesus. And same with some shepherd boys, you know, they hear the angels talking about this, that the, the Messiah is here, Jesus is here, all those prophecies you heard so many years ago, it's finally coming true. And so they come and have this moment, and it describes the interaction I would love to get into and encourage you guys to read it later on, but basically they come and they are in awe and wonder and they worship him, they give these things to him, and so they can rejoice in the gift of God being with us, Emmanuel. And so we too can celebrate that gift of God's presence. We can worship him just like we did tonight. We can worship and thank him for all that he is and all that he's doing in our lives and then just like the shepherds, one of the things I love about the shepherd story, and I, we could do a whole series about this, but basically they went out and they went to the towns and all their friends and they started rejoicing and letting everyone know about the good news that God is with us. And so I would encourage you to think about how you can go and share that good news with the people in your life that probably could really use some good news right about now. And so I'd encourage you to worship, to rejoice, because God saves us, God is with us, and God keeps his promises. The bottom line is when you rest in God's presence, you can rejoice because he, because hope has come. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for your grace. Thank you so much that you chose to humble yourself to come onto earth, to take on flesh, to become fully, fully man, while you're also fully God, you chose to become fully man, to experience, to go through the temptations, the struggles, the pain, and the hurt that comes with life. And then ultimately, you chose to go and to die on the cross to save us from our sins, to pay the penalty for our mistakes, for our sins, the things that we've done, so that we could be forgiven, and we could be ultimately in a relationship with you. Thank you for giving up what matters most to you to show us how much we matter to you. God, we love you. God, we wanna rejoice in the gift of our presence to be able to have a relationship with you. God, help us to go about our everyday lives sharing the, the good news, rejoicing that we have a relationship, we have hope, it is here. You are with us even when life is tough. We have a way, we have hope that we can trust. God, thank you for saving us, thank you for being with us, and thank you for keeping your promises. 
We love you, Jesus, and it's all in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, before we guys go tonight, I just wanna say thank you so much for joining us. And as we mentioned during the announcements, unfortunately, this is the last time we are meeting together in 2020, which is kind of sad. But make sure you follow us on social media just to stay in the loop about all the events that we have planned for January. It's gonna be an action-packed month and it's gonna be super exciting. But we are so excited for all that God has done in and through you guys this semester and we're looking forward to keeping the momentum going next year. So I'm super grateful for all of you. And uh, one thing I forgot to do was give away, I have two gift cards left for the ugliest sweaters. And so, let's see, I, I know one that I definitely wanted to give one to was uh, Joshua Brand over there. Dude, I love this sweater. Is that, is that a unicorn on it? Dude, that thing is so sweet. Everyone give him a round of applause because that, that sweater is absolutely sick. And I have one gift card left and I need any, anyone who's wearing an ugly sweater right now, I just need you to stand up real quick so I can do like one final judgment of all the, the ugly sweaters. Um, it's hard for me to not go to Trisha because hers is like classic ugly, you know? But yeah, Trisha, you are our our second winner tonight. Everyone give Trisha a round of applause. She told me she got that at a thrift store and it looks super cool, I love it. All right, hey, anyways, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, feel free to hang out outside as we, uh, you're waiting for your parents and stuff, but we will see you guys in church, hopefully on Sundays, but next time for Highlight, January 10th. See you guys soon.